What a week for Stephen Vogt. Sunday, a game-winning home run in Cleveland made the drive to Cincinnati to participate in his first All-Star game a smooth one. Last night, after being honored on the field with fellow All-Star Sonny Gray, Vogt delivered in the 10th inning with a walk-off single as the wild crowd at the Coliseum went home happy. Today, the Athletics go for the series win versus the Twins, and they will face a familiar face in Tommy Malone. Final game of the series, A's-Twins next. Nothing better than day baseball at the Coliseum. It's the rubber game of the series. Interesting pitching matchup. Former athletic Tommy Malone is going to take them on for the Twins, and he will be opposed by Jesse Chavez. And it is game three of this series. A's looking for a series win. A's Twins coming up on Comcast Sportsnet California. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kyber. Billy Burns got the winning rally started and ended up scoring the winning run last night. And, Ray, you know, in the uh, the chart that has all the Rookie of the Year candidates on it, Billy Burns' name is starting to creep up right. near the top. And it's hard to believe he's just a rookie. We saw him last year when the game was very fast. He slowed it down, but not his speed. And we've always said he did it in San Diego. He did it last night. How about a double in the 10th inning? This was great, but even better, more daring was the stolen base. Nobody out. Third base with a left-handed hitter. He just barely gets hit, and then Stephen Bolt brings him in with an RBI base hit to left field. He's the catalyst of this ball club. He gets doused. He didn't even get the walk-off. He scored the winning run, but he's a very exciting player, and let's just hope he continues because he's going to be around a long time. So two guys that are going to pitch today. Jesse Chavez struggling some. He's lost three in a row, and Tommy Malone has been pitching great for the Twins. Jesse Chavez probably pitched his best game in May against these Twins at Target Field. Seven and a third innings, one unearned run. He picked up the victory. We know what he can do. Keep the ball down. Keep the ball on the ground. Tommy Malone has been a godsend for the Minnesota Twins. Five wins on the season. They needed a left-hander in the rotation. They got it in Tommy Malone. He did a great job for the Athletics, doing even better for the Twins. And the Twins just trying to stay close to the Royals in that AL Central. The A's, well, they want a little momentum heading into that big series against the Toronto Blue Jays. We'll have lineups and first pitch from the Coliseum. When we come back, it's the A's and the Twins on Comcast Sportsnet California. Stick around.
in the Box. Taste the new black pepper cheeseburger today, only at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. Sunday at the Coliseum, and that means the Little Leaguers taking the field with the Big Leaguers. Oh, it's a fun moment, and I think the Big Leaguers enjoy it yeah. as well. So the A's have taken the field, and they're all whites, and let's check out the weather for today. It's presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission-free boardwalk is now open daily. 81 degrees, and it's humid today. We don't feel that a whole lot here at the Coliseum during our games, but there is some humidity in the air. So the Twins in town, and this is the rubber game of the series. And let's check out the lineup for them. It starts with the all-star Brian Dozier. Dozier a home run on Friday night. Eddie Rosario moves up and hits second. Joe Maurer hits third. Torrey Hunter will DH today, and he will be in the cleanup spot. Then Trevor Plouffe, Aaron Hicks, Shane Robinson starts today in left field. Eric Pryor will catch, and Danny Santana is the shortstop. Jesse Chavez on the mound for the Athletics. As we mentioned earlier, his uh, one of his better starts came against these twins at Target Field, seven and a third. So he last pitched on the ninth. That was in New York. And, of course, the All-Star break. He did not pitch in Cleveland. So he's uh, ready to take on the twins with a lot of rest. And that's something that the four-day All-Star break allows a manager and pitching coach to do. 19th, uh, 20th game. He's making his 16th start for this right-hander who, if he keeps the ball down, should get a lot of ground ball outs. He had 10 a couple of starts ago against Seattle. So Jesse's ready. So is Brian Dozier. And the first pitch of the ball game is high with a fastball. So 107 first pitch from the Coliseum. There's always the possibility and the problem that exists about too strong. When you have a little bit too much rest, the guys get off their normal turn of every fifth day. Casimir pitched with nine days rest and right around that same amount of time for Jesse Chavez. Probably helps you in the long run. Yeah, in the long run, Kaz did a great job last night and I think the best shot we had in the bottom of the eighth inning after pitching eight great innings, he'd said to the skipper, I'm ready to go. And got the first out of the ninth and fortunately that was it. But uh, no decision, but the A's got the win, but an outstanding performance. Just one walk, five strikeouts in his first inning was his well pitched inning as we've seen especially after loading the bases nobody out. Two one pitch just a bit outside not a bad pitch. Gabe Morales thought it was a little bit outside three and one the count. Jesse Chavez looking for his fifth win of the year. He came right at him with a fastball and now it's three and two. I learned something last night. Scott Casmer did the same thing with the Twins hitters, and Dozier was one of them. And a 3 2 fastball popped it up on the infield. Here's a 3 1. I'm not going to walk you fastball. And Chavez is like that. Like Phil Hughes last night for the Twins. Yeah, pitch swing and a miss. Dozier chased what would have been ball four. Jesse Chavez will take it, and he strikes out the first hitter of the game. Cut fastball and it did not have the strike zone, but right there, the and late movement and what looked like a strike initially for Dozier, it ended up being out of the strike zone. But there's the outstanding cut fastball that Chavez throws and gets a big strike out to start the game. Expo brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. No bloop double today. Nothing. For, uh, Ryan Dozier. So here's Eddie Rosario, the right fielder, and he swings at the first pitch, fouls it at home plate. Hitting 282, four home runs, 21 RBIs. Two for eight in the series, couple of singles and a stolen base. Twins come in 50 and 41 on the year. They're five games back of the Kansas City Royals in the Central. But they right now are the number one wild card team in the American League. So they got that going for them. And that's a good point because I think for a team, and we talked about the wild card, the extra wild card. So basically, you got five teams that are going to make it. Three division winners plus two wild cards that will play one game to play the division series. But 
And for a team that has not had success lately, last few years, for them, this is great. Those are two wildcard teams right now, the Twins and the Astros. And amazing as we approach the trading deadline, which means two and a half months talking about the wild cards. And that's what leads teams to think about, well, maybe we're not going to trade. Sell by we mean them just hang in there. Maybe we can see what happens. Look at the Tigers, Blue Jays, Rays, three and a half behind the first two. And of course, even the A's start looking at that as they are trailing eight and a half in the division. Nine and a half. Yeah, listen, if you're three and a half, four and a half games back in the wild card, and granted, there's a lot of teams ahead of you, but you can't sell. No. Right? I mean, I mean it's you're you're a you're a, a winning streak away from that's right. Sliding up and maybe being one of those two. Three and two now to Rosario, but that is what that second wild card has done. Made things much more interesting and maybe more difficult for general managers yeah. this time of year. It is that time of the year. We talk about tough decisions for managers, whether to pull a star to bring in a reliever. Zobrist, a couple steps to his left, and that's out number two. A's defense this afternoon lines up. This way, Smolinski's in left, Burns in center, Reddick in right, Glory, Simeon, Zobrist, and Canna around the infield with Fegley doing the catching. They're just saying, Cap, about the the manager's tough decision, but general managers also I mean there is a lot to determine between now and the 31st because it's a non-waiver trade deadline. Unless the guy has a no trade, you can make trades without having to clear waivers. They can still happen after the 31st, but usually in the next couple of weeks is when they happen. Flip to shallow left. Smolinski dives and he caught it. So a nice play by Jake Smolinski, and that's a three up, three down inning for Jesse Chavez in the top of the first. It's in the fifth round. Lori Fegley, Reddick, and Simeon. And it is left hander Tommy Malone on the mound for the Minnesota Twins. We're so accustomed to saying the Athletics. Three years pitching for the A's 12, 13, and 14. Traded to the Twins last year. And for Tommy Malone making his 12th start, 5 and 1 record. And he does not throw hard, as we know, but he will change speeds very effectively. Two and four seam fastball, cutter, curveball, and a changeup. And a crafty left hander, if you will, because he knows how to pitch. And that is the most important thing for a pitcher, as we saw last night with Scott Kasman. Burns goes after the first pitch, pops it up into foul territory. Joe Maurer has room, looking up into the bright sunshine, and he makes the catch. Quick look at the Twins' defense for today. Shane Robinson is in left field, Aaron Hicks in center, Eddie Rosario in right. Loop at third, Santana at short, Dozier at second, Maher at first, and Eric Fryer 
is the catcher. So Kurt Suzuki's going to enjoy a day off at least to start the game. And they have an off day tomorrow down in Anaheim, so they get two full days. Same for Stephen Vogt, and he's banged up. And last night he got hit in the right hand, his throwing hand, as there was a runner on base trying to protect it. Brought up a good point. He said, and he had his hand kind of loose, and he said, "You want to protect the thumb." And he had it kind of tucked back, mm -hmm. and if you, if you tighten your fist, that's when it can really hurt. But he had ice on it last night for just another part of his body. But. Uh, Gets gets the night or the day off, so he'll get too full. But this is a watch the right hand as he's protecting. Because he's a runner on base, you want to be able to have both hands available. It came right back, but he had it loose. And he said you protect your thumb, which he did. It hurt. Ice. But he's okay. <laughs> Easy for me to say. But it's amazing how the thumb can be the most critical part, and he was able to protect that. Well, you're the only person in this booth that would know what that feels like. So it is easy for you to say that. Well, I had three in a row off my index finger. That's why it's ugly. Yeah, the but pointer finger is yeah. not working as well as it used to for Ray. There it is. Canna swings at that Tommy Malone changeup, which we saw so many times, and that's out number two. I'll even throw it. He'll throw it a lot, especially the right-handers, because it's a it's a go-to pitch for him. You see the spin. It's out of the strike zone, and ideally. From a pitcher standpoint to a hitter, that's where you want to throw it. You do not want to elevate it. And that was a good one by how about the 33? It was Warren. See the hockey player, right? Justin Morneau. <laughs> Justin Morneau, yeah. Patrick Waugh, thank you there. I know these hockey guys. So two outs for Zobrist. I don't think Tommy Malone's changeup. I mean, it's. I wouldn't say it's a big strikeout change of pitch. It's almost one where he would prefer that you made contact. Exactly. Because you're just. It's such a good changeup. You're not going to get the barrel of the bat on it a whole lot. Well, it makes his 89 mile hour fastball look about 99 because it's such an effective changeup. And again, we got a chance to see him pitch so well. And I'm sure the manager in the A's dugout knows exactly what that means because he was very supportive of Tommy Malone. Part of it right there, the off speed chase percentage much higher this year than last year. So he is getting people to, to go after that pitch out of the strike zone. And this is the time to do it right now. We get two strikes on a hitter. Billy Burns swung at the first pitch. Canna swung at a ball in the dirt for strike three on the changeup. So it's a good pitch. It always has been for Malone. Zobrist in this series, one for six. He's walked a couple times. And that one's hit high in the air, right field. Sario circles underneath it, side retired. So both pitchers have three up, three down first innings, and we're headed to the second, no score.
USAA. Today, USAA would like to pay special recognition to all of our service members at home and abroad. Top of the second, A's and Twins scoreless. It's a warm, humid day at the Coliseum. A's will have tomorrow off. And then they will host the Toronto Blue Jays. High-powered Toronto Blue Jays. Blue Jays won today, four to nothing. They'll probably fly tomorrow to the Bay Area. Or maybe see a today. A couple mm -hmm. aggressive hitters in one, well, actually a few, but don't stand out. Jose Bautista. <laughs> he hit a home run today. He hit one yesterday. He's up on the third or fourth level at Rogers Center. He will swing hard, but be very disciplined as well. I looked up the Blue Jays' numbers. They, Ray, coming into today, they have scored 494 runs. That's the most in the major leagues. It's 78 more runs than any other wow. team in baseball. But they're only 500 because they have not pitched real well. They're 12th in the league in ERA. But anyways, that's what's coming to the Coliseum. A very, very good offense with some questionable pitching. The Toronto Blue Jays. Always aggressive. Torrey Hunter swing of the 2-1 sinker. Cutter would not chase, but Torrey is always going to be aggressive. And he said when he was younger on Friday at 39. <laughs> Thought a little bit different than when he turned 40 yesterday. But he is an aggressive hitter and a team leader. He's got three hits in this series. A little conversation after Jesse Chavez shook a couple of pitches. See the numbers for Chavez in the early innings of the 150 earn run average. Goes back to the cutter. No, inside maybe the two center. He got in there and it's popped up. Begley, right near home plate, makes the catch. Oh. That one was up there for a while. And as a fair ball, and Torrey Hunter was in foul territory walking back towards the dugout. And I'm sure that's something that he will remember. And next time he'll be running to first base. This is a fair ball. And the first baseman, Hanna, went back to the bag once he saw Fegley and see Torrey Hunter looking up and that's uh, dangerous from a hitter standpoint that if it is dropped by the catcher might still be able to throw him out of first. Yeah, I think Torrey thought he's going to be in foul and then. <laughs> that's a, a very tough play handled nicely by Josh Fegley. One away for Plouffe who bounces one foul past Gene Glenn. Is that the toughest pop up yes. for a catcher the yes. one that's right around home plate I guess really right above you and it comes back mm -hmm. it will always go back to the field in fair territory as that one did you can run back if the ball looks like it's going to be the backstop you run after it and it could end up home plate that's the spin and we see it down the, the third baseline foul balls look like going to be in the seats and they will come back into play and uh, hustling third baseman of this foul territory can get to them. That's why you're always yelling for first or third base where the ball goes up like that. I did it. Anyway. <laughs> no, it's one of the intriguing things about the catcher's position. It's the only guy on the defense that is looking out at the field right. as opposed to in. And the only one in action foul territory. I'm going to say no other sport has that. Yeah. And no other position can you look straight out and see every other position player. No other. On the infield or the outfield, can you look in and, and see everybody? But a catcher can, and that's why he's typically the one in charge. 3 1 pitch is hit high and foul, right field side. So full count to Trevor Plouffe. Plouffe is two for eight. Of course, he had the grand slam on Friday night. He's got a couple of grand slams this year. The problem for Jesse already, the number three, two counts. It's the second batter in this second inning, which means a lot of pitches for him. Strike three call. Took a little off. Got the high strike call. Pluth doesn't agree with Gabe Morales. Uh, Gabe's not calling the low strike, so he has to call that one. And Pluth headed to first base and a little bit above the belt with the stride, and that's a surprise Trevor Pluth. And there is the location. Usually that pitch just below the letters above the belt is not called, but 
Bottom line, if you're not given the low one, that has to be a strike. So two outs for Aaron Hicks. Hicks fouls it at the plate. Hicks is one for eight in the series, a single, and he is also walked. Hicks is a switch hitter. Twins have scored a total of seven runs in this series, a total of 14 hits. In the dirt. So two and one to Hicks. In mean, the game that Jesse pitched against the Yankees and ended up pitching very well as he went eight innings in the game, but through some like 42 pitches the first inning, as he told us after the game, trying to make the adjustments, figure out what he was doing incorrectly, settle down and pitch great for the next six with uh, not a lot of pitches to get through eight innings. Looks like he's trying to find it again in this game, again, throwing a lot of pitches. Right on the outside corner, good pitch, two and two. Kevin, I think it's hard too for a pitcher who likes to live on the corners, which most guys do, and you miss just a little bit with the ball running a little bit too much. You never want to go to the center part of the plate and get hit. So he's still trying to figure it out by going to the corners. And there's a liner just over the head of Simeon, and Hicks has a two out single. First hit in the ball game for either team. And that'll bring up Shane Robinson, right handed hitter. Went back door with a curveball and stayed up just enough for Hicks to hit it back up the middle and smart hitting. Get a couple of strikes to shorten the swing a little bit and just try to go up the middle opposite field and Hicks did it perfectly. So Jesse trying to throw the curveball, he may say, nope, not anymore. Let's just put that one away, go back to the cutter, the sinker, maybe a couple of change ups until the curveball works a little bit more effectively. Robinson is playing left field. He came in the game last night late. Pinch runner and then a defensive replacement. In fact, he scored the go ahead run in the top of the ninth inning. Twins were feeling good at that point. Outside corner first strike. Josh Fickley catching Stephen Vogt throwing a base runner out last night, but the A's catchers have done a, a very good job throwing out base runners. And we know the statistical pack always comes out, number of caught stealings, and they get the video on the catchers. And I'm sure Paul Molitor and his staff realize that Josh Fegley has a very strong, accurate arm to try to throw out base runners, which means that maybe they will not attempt to steal bases. One and one the count to Robinson. And now one and two. Okay, Strikeout so far in the game for Jesse Chavez. Making some early noise. We're a big crowd today, but those who are here up and underneath the overhang because of the uh, the heat beating down on them down on the lower bowl. High fastball swing and a miss, and Robinson's gone, and so are the twins in the second inning. So hitting a runner left. We're going to the bottom of the second, no score.
Mill Wind Up Toy presented by Adventel Networks on Sunday, August the 2nd. 15,000 fans will receive the first of its kind giveaway of the A's third base coach when the A's take on the Cleveland Indians in a Sunday matinee. Get your tickets today at athletics.com or by calling 877-493-BALL. He'd like to get the wind up going, score some runs. He's always happy when that happens. Butler, Smolenski, and Lori here in the bottom of the second inning against Tommy Malone. He had a strikeout in the three up, three down inning in the first. Tommy Malone has been on some kind of roll. His last five starts, five earned runs in 32 innings. He's won four of those with one no decision. So, and we saw him Ray with these where he could get on one of those yeah. nice stretches. I think a little bit uh, for him knowing that he was going to pitch against his former team for the first time ever. Had to be thinking a little bit about that, especially over the weekend. Pitching the series finale for both teams trying to win the, the series. The Twins as they're in second place. And of course, scoreboard watching, but for Tommy Malone at the Odette Cole, that's what he did as a member of the Athletics. 15 wins and 34 starts. Overall, his record with the A's was 31 and 22. He was 13 and 10, 12 and 9, and then 6 and 3 last year before he was traded for Sam Ford. Two-two pitch is ripped foul. Scotty doing it again. Well, oh, he is day game after night game. He's hustling as always. Those relievers don't even move anymore. They just so confident. It's really like just having a big screen yeah. right in Look front at of him. all. They're the just relievers. saying, no big deal. There's Scotty. Well, he's been working with Wash, yeah. and that's made a big difference <laughs> as well. Wash has the pancake glove out for him. Change up, swing and a miss. There's a change up. Tommy Malone against the Dodgers June the 20th. How about this? And he had everything working 2012. That's a big miracle season for the athletics and for Tommy Malone had it working very, very well. Seth Smith. Good sticky fastball there. Another off speed pitch and Tommy Malone. I tell you, when you walk off the field, you give it high fives as a starting pitcher. You know, you pitched a great game and he did that. One. So one out for Smolinski. One of the heroes last night for the A's, Jake Smolinski with the pinch hit RBI single in the bottom of the ninth inning. He didn't hit it hard, but it was good enough. Yeah. Not only for Glenn Perkins, a blown save for the first time all season, and to give up a two out hit, Brett Laurie, a wild pitch, and then the base hit, all that happening so quickly. Glory to follow. Yeah, this is the way it happened last night. Brett Laurie at first base and Glenn Perkins as ball hit the umpire's right foot, but the secondary lead by Laurie got him to second and then the next pitch fastball in hit it just hard enough, just softly enough. And it landed in front, and Brett Laurie scored the tying run. Jake Smolenski brought him in, and the A's would win it in 10. Strike three called on the inside corner. So two outs here in the third inning. Good pitch by Malone. Well, you think outside, outside, and here comes a stinky fastball inside and freezes the hitter as it did Smolenski and perfectly thrown. And when you're not throwing higher than 90 miles per hour, you have to be just perfect on the inside part of the plate, and he was with that pitch. Here's Lori. And as you saw that play with Lori going to second, you know, your initial thought is well, the ball, Suzuki couldn't find it, he was looking for it, and Lori took off, but I don't know that a lot of runners would have gone and I say that because you see the ball and the ball's right at the catcher's feet. The runner sees it. Yeah, yeah the runner sees it and 
If it's not a long ways away, most runners will stay there. But Lori, good secondary lead, and, and he read it, he took a little chance, but worked out great. Throw is wide, and Lori's safe. So a bad throw by Danny Santana, and what was a fairly routine play, but you know what? Maybe the Lori speed comes into play there. But he also, if you watch him, he backed up to get a better hop, and because of backing up, right there. Yeah, See, he gets on his heels, and then he I better hurry, and the speed of Lori, like you said, Forced him to throw quickly and overthrow first base. Joe Maurer trying to catch the ball, keep his foot on the bag. But he was fortunate that the ball kicked up the line. But there is a decision the infielder has to make. Do I go after the ball, get the bad hop, short hop, or back up? Got the good hop, strong arm, but overthrew the ball. And Joe Maurer got a glove on it. To keep Brett Lurie first. So second air for the Twins in this series. First pitch to Fegley, fouled straight back, fastball at 87 miles an hour. Well, back to last night with Lori on the wild pitch, and the ball had to hit the umpire's right foot. But as a base runner, if you're aggressive and you are thinking about a secondary lead and the ball hits the ground, you're going to be taking off and you're kind of jumping out. And you're able to take off, and, and especially in that situation, I mean, there are a couple of daring plays for the A's in the ninth and the tenth. And I guess my point is raised. Yeah, after you see the play develop, well, you're right. Kurt Suzuki couldn't find that, but you don't know you don't that's going to exactly. happen. The guys who deco, exactly. They, they try to say they'll look around. They know where the ball is, and they'll look around trying to get the runner to take off. But Zook knew the ball had gotten by. He did not know that it hit the umpire and kept it close to him. But you're right. Brett Lorry didn't know all that. Toward left, Robinson hustling back, and it's gone. Right over top of the wall and left Fegley homers and the A's lead two to nothing. Now we just saw an example of a very strong young man because that was a front foot fooled on a changeup, but the strength. He went down and got it, and yes, it is a beautiful afternoon with the sun brightly shining, and the ball carries. Line drive, and Robinson ran out of room as the ball just kept carrying down the left field line, over the fence barely, and a two-run home run, and an air started the at-bat, and the inning kept it going for the A's. And an, and an air on a fairly yep. routine play. So the A's take advantage of the mistake and lead 2-0 here in the second. So last night, the hustle by Lori on an infield hit hit the same guy, and today, an error by that same player, and the A's take advantage of it. So Reddick hits, hitting in the A spot against the lefty Tommy Malone. Cued foul, and the count one and two. Big shift on for Reddick, three infielders on the right side. Loof, the third baseman, has moved all the way over behind second base. Santana stays in his same spot. And for Josh Fegley, who has not played a lot, for him to have six home runs, that has been very impressive for him in this season. So Reddick swings and misses, so three strikeouts in the inning for Malone. But the only thing that matters is two runs by the ace, thanks to Josh Fegley's two-run homer. So third inning coming up, the A's leading.
I think it says a lot when Stephen Vold, who's had an all star season and represented the A's, and first thing comes out of his mouth about Josh Fegley is that, quote, he can handle left handed pitchers as well as anybody on this team. And that's not even a Geico quote. That's just a Stephen Vold <laughs> quote. <laughs> we can make it a Geico well, quote, I guess. Nice. But, uh, so Stephen Vogt gets the day off. He had been playing first base against lefties while Fegley has been catching. But again, it's a pretty good duo of catchers with Vogt and Fegley. Their production offensive. Rico two to Eric Fryer, the catcher for the Twins today. Fryer just three for six on the season. It's called up on the eighth of July. Chavez who has not received a lot of run support of course the two run home run and even though both runs unearned the A's will take them with effectively two run home run. But Jesse Chavez always appreciates the run support and trying to figure it out this being pitch number 40 in the third and the 2 2 pitch good sinking fastball and fire strikes out. Stephen Vogt last night let Billy Burns steal third and then got an elevated fastball from Fiend and that brought in the winning run. Billy Burns, his second walk off, Vogt knew it and again thought what he said. He knew as a left handed hitter it opened up the lane <laughs> for the catcher to throw to third. <laughs> oh, and then here we go after that dousing and by the way, there's something else to enjoy. Fegley, nice play, throws in time. Very nice play by Fegley to get Danny Santani. And you want to see textbook play by catcher. You get your maximum effort on your throw by spinning the way he does. Out in front of the plate. Watch this. Mask off, that spins, guy. picked up his target at first base, and then a bullet perfectly thrown to Canna. You circle around, takes more time with the speed of Santana. He knew. Get to it, spin, throw. And that's the way you make that kind of play. And with his arm, plus coming off a two-run home run, adrenaline alone is going to throw him out. Here's the leadoff man, Dozier. Dozier struck out swinging in the first inning. Four strikeouts for Jesse Chavez. Good pitch there, one and one. To 90 miles an hour. So you get a swing through with 90, you must have some movement. Yeah, so that's it. I, I don't know that Jesse can throw the ball straight. And from a catcher standpoint, sometimes you, you call for a certain pitch by call for a four seam fastball, and you get some movement, just natural movement, it makes it a difficult time to catch the ball. Trickles away from Fegley, so the count evens up at two and two. Dozier chased another pitch out of the strike zone. He did that in the first inning. He does it again here in the third. So five strikeouts for Jesse Chavez. He's leading two to nothing. When we come back, it'll be Billy Burns hitting second in the inning as he is a rookie of the year candidate in the American League.
Marcus Simeon will lead things off for the A's in the bottom of the third. A Fegley home run last inning. As the A's leading two to nothing early. It's their former teammate, Tommy Malone. Bauer drifting into foul territory, shading his eyes. He grabs it. To one pitch, one out. And now to the top of the order, and Billy Burns. Now batting. Burns fouled out in the first inning. He's three for ten in this series. Continues to lead all rookies in the major leagues in hits, 85. Also stolen bases with 19. Gonna swung at the first pitch he saw the game and fouled the ball to Joe Maurer at first base. Takes the first pitch fastball this time. Just a little flare and it's dropped down by Santana. So AL rookie ranks for Billy Burns, second in average, second in on base percentage. There's the hits. The stolen bases, he's second in runs. And as we've said many times, there's just not a rookie in the American League who's really running away with anything, having a huge year. And that's why he is a legitimate rookie of the year candidate. And he's been very consistent. And, and you don't have to look at all the spectacular numbers that home run hitters and pitchers and Different players put up. I mean, you can look at somebody who is a catalyst of a ball club, scoring runs, getting hits, stealing bases, and think back to the three consecutive All Stars of Canseco, McGuire, and Weiss. You look at what Canseco, McGuire did, and then Walt Weiss, more defense and short, and not close to the numbers that the other two put up, but still won the rookie of the year. Well, in the stat sheets or stat pack that we get, there's a couple of pages on. Rookie batting leaders and rookie pitching leaders, and there's just there's nobody that jumps out. I know the the young man from the Rays, Steven Souza, has 15 home runs, but he's on the disabled. And with those 15 home runs, he's not in the top 10 in hitting. So his average is under 250. And Canna is going to be aboard. He was hit by a pitch. A two out base runner that worked for the A's last inning. Back foot slider and it happened to hit the back foot of Mark Canna. Tried to get out of the way and hit a lot of his foot and then leg, but it was a sharp breaking ball that Tommy likes to throw inside the lefties and just overthrew it a bit. So that'll bring up Zobrist. Side to Zobrist to get a fly ball to right field to end the first inning. Okay, for a guy down the uh, foul ball alley over there. Too many right handed hitters against the lefty Tommy Malone is only Josh Reddick, so he's sitting a lot at the release when the A's are hitting. He's more just kind of enjoying yeah. the game. He's got his flag. He was waving his flag a lot, but uh, not really interested in catching any foul balls, at least when the A's are hitting. Chang? Because, like you said, if a right hander hits a foul ball to him, look out, because it's going to be a bullet. <laughs> There he is. He's got the gold jersey today. Got his glove just in case, but not likely with a right-handed hit. Number, number 34, Raleigh Fingers. Dave Stewart wore that number proudly as well. He's just figuring it's going to be a quiet day. Just support the A's waving the flag. That's Oakland A's flag. The runner at first. And has got five steals this year. He's only been thrown out one time and he takes off and it's ripped down the left field line and it's going to be off the wall. Robinson plays it, hustles it back in there, waving Canna. The throw to the plate is just offline and Canna scores. Mike Gallegos setting him the whole way and with two outs, why not? And Canna slides in. 
safely by a fair amount. Now we just talked about the wind up windmill of Mike Gallego and hits a perfect example of the real live Mike Gallego. This is a tough call for third base coach. The ball came back hard to Robinson. Strong arm Santana. Gallego sent him in a head first slide with the throw offline. It's going to take two perfect throws. And as a third base coach, that's what you hope does not happen. And Mark Canna showing his speed. Mike Gallego waving the windmill. And that was a nice combination of a hit batter, a two out double, and a third base coach aggressively sending the runner. In your statement, two outs, why not? That is the most important statement because it's so hard to get two out hits. Canna actually slowed up trying to find the baseball. Two outs, you don't have to do that. Just keep running, and they will stop you. And so Ben Zobris jumping on the 2 1 pitch and driving it down the line. But the way the ball came off the wall, that was scary for the A's trying to score the run, but they got it. So another two out rally leads to run. So the A's leading three to nothing. So a two out hit by pitch this inning on a two strike. On a two strike. Last inning, a two out air led to the home run. We're watching Mark Canna hesitate at second. He was going for the stolen base. He heard contact, and the hesitation was maybe where's the ball? But again, with two outs, you don't have to worry about being doubled up, as would be the case with less than two. Hit well to right center. And that baby's gone. Butler to deep right center. And it is five to nothing athletics. Wow. Five runs all with two outs and Tommy Malone knows the Coliseum as well as anybody the way the ball carries the daytime and Billy Butler as he did in the open of this series crushed the ball and to right center and you could see Hicks just shut it down knowing that it was going to carry out by plenty Tommy Malone couldn't believe it and you, know, you feel like you make a pretty good pitch and then you're watching a hitter circle the bases. Maybe Billy Butler's going to be a second half player. That would be nice. Pitch is high, so one and one the count. And he's five and seventeen against left handed starters this year. But a good start here, and they'll face a couple of lefties in the first two games of the Blue Jays here. Burley is going to pitch on Tuesday. The game will take about an hour and 45 minutes, at least from his standpoint. One nothing final. He's winning. <laughs> <laughs> Felix Dubron and the other lefty will pitch on two or on. Wednesday. So Burley Tuesday, DuPont Wednesday. Three straight lefties facing the athletics. Two and two the count to Smolinski, who struck out in the second inning. You know, Tommy Malone, who has been pitching great for the Twins, but getting knocked around today. And that one is belted deep at five. Second level in the dirt, so we got a full count to Smolinski. As a pitcher, you start thinking about the way a ball carries on an afternoon game at the Coliseum, and you're trying desperately to keep the ball down, keep the ball on the ground. Two out magic for the A's today. That one's hit to left field. Going back is Robinson, and that baby's gone. Smolenski homer. Six to nothing, the A's lead. I think the ball's carrying today, right? I think it's carrying. 
June 12th at Anaheim, last time back to back. So the A's, third time this year, and they do it today at another off speed pitch, three and two. And see him out on the front foot in the shrink, like Fegley. And Jake Smolinski hit his first home run last year as a member of the Rangers against the A's. And this afternoon, after a game tying single last night, it's a 3 2 over the stretch. It's three home runs, and yes, Cat, the ball's carried. Strike to Laurie. And I say that only because it's not because Smolinski doesn't have good power, because he does. But I've seen a couple home runs today, out, guys out on their front foot. And exactly. Enough to get it out of here. That doesn't happen quite as much during night games. No, it doesn't. A lot of disappointed players, Pitch, hitters in particular. Pitchers love it, but hitters definitely don't. Foul territory. And Joe Bauer, good effort, cannot quite come up with it. Fourth game this year with three or more home runs. And we're only in the third inning. He's now with 78 home runs on the year. They come in 12th in the American League in home runs hit. Pitch number 58 coming up from Malone. Not close. One and two. Ball loose. It's down the right field line from the bullpen. The Twins have some action down there. A little bit outside, right hander J.R. Graham is throwing. Ball away, three and two. So Fegley a home run, Butler a home run, Smolinski a home run. The foul ball right side. You know, we talked about Tommy Malone at the beginning when he struck out Ken on the changeup in the dirt. You look at the changeups he's thrown since then, they've been elevated. And that's something that really can't afford to do. If you're a pitcher and you want to chase changeup, you want to be out of the strike zone. Sometimes very hard to bounce a pitch, throw a little bit too hard. So Laurie fighting off some good pitches to keep the count at three and two. Pitches for Malone. After what was a three up, three down yeah. first inning. And there's a shot to center a base hit. So all after two are out. It goes hit by pitch, double, homer, homer, single. And that might be it, especially after getting hit 0 and 2. Paul Molitor going to the bullpen and fastball center cut. And Brett Lower, who started 0 and 2, line drive to right center. And that's going to be it for Tommy Malone. Tough outing for the former athletic. So when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change tune-up and smog experts.
presented by the Chevron Techron Advantage credit card. Friday, July the 31st. Fans can watch the post-game fireworks show from the outfield grass, but as always, on-field capacity is limited. Get your tickets today at athletics.com slash fireworks. So Tommy Malone will be disappointed with what happened. Two and two-thirds innings. Five hits, six runs for earned run. So, J.R. Graham takes over. 25th appearance. Graham was a rule five pick from the Braves. So he had to stick with the Twins, and he has done that coming out of their bullpen. Four years in the Braves organization. And he is back home. J.R. Graham is from Livermore. How about the Sox? You gotta like that. Got the TC. He does that for his mother, right? Yeah. Remember that story? Right. TC on the side, exactly. Yep, yeah, exactly. One and one the count to Fegley. Livermore High School for J.R. Graham. Went to Santa Clara for three years. And the Braves picked him. And kind of a half hearted swing by Fegley. He was fooled on a sharp breaking ball from Graham. Cut fastball, a little bigger, almost acting like a slider. So one and two. So I don't know if you remember the story. We told it when the A's were in Minnesota, but J.R. Graham's mother is legally blind, but she does like to watch the games and it you can see a little bit. It helps her recognize when he's in the game the high socks. Right. Is that a great story? That's or a great story. And hopefully she's here watching firsthand today. Yeah. Pulls the pant legs up. That's it one time. That didn't work. And that one's belted to left. Robinson going back, and that one bangs off the wall. Here comes Laurie. They're waving him home. He will score easily. Have a day, Josh Fegley. So a line drive double off the wall in left field. Man, is he strong. Another similar pitch, this one a mistake, and it's usually what happens on mistakes. See the catcher go down and in. This ball come, came close to being another home run, another two run shot. But once it hit the out of town scoreboard, Robinson could not play the carom perfectly, and that allowed Brett Lorry on the move to be able to score. And if Mike Gallego to try to stop him, no way. So all the runs charged to Tommy Malone. Seven runs, five earned, and there's a line drive, and that's a foul ball. Just foul. Well, Reddick hit it. He had to be thinking that's a double, but it just started to slice a little bit too much. And there's the slice right there. Just in the foul territory, barely. Good look here. Yeah. Chalk? No chalk. I guess uh, they're going to take a look at it. Is it fair? No. <laughs> and Bob <laughs> Ellen said, you're right, Kate. She must have heard you. It's my favorite Chip Hale story. I'll tell you that story sometime. Tell it now. <laughs> now wait till the next inning because you start to tell a story two hours. It's not going to work. Only Vince Scully Never works. Yeah. Vince, Vince Scully, Scully always has the perfect amount of time. <laughs> You're seeing Vin Scully in about a week. Pitch is hot. So one and one the count to Reddick. Five runs here in the third inning for the A's. All after seven nothing. Two yeah. strike, two out, hit batter. Hmm. Hmm. That's so all the runs coming with two outs. That is a, a good afternoon already, and it's just the third inning. Foul. Ty Waller makes the play. It's 
good spot to be right in the front row. Although you got to be careful down there. Jesse Chavez, good to be Jesse Chavez with the run support. He's due. Put up the shutdown innings. Might have the fewest in the league just because he won't score a lot of runs, but today that's not been the case. That one to the backstop, and Fegley will trot to third. Block a ball like that, you're superhuman because that was a no doubt wild pitch. Just kept running and prior the catcher went after it, and really not much of a chance. Just off his glove as he tried to move laterally. That's the one you maybe just want to try to backhand because you have no chance to get your body in front of it. Good effort, but just could not make it happen. So two and two, the count to Reddick, who struck out in the second inning. Is one deep to right, but it'll be fine. So J.R. Graham in the game for Tommy Malone, and he may be out there for a while. Yeah. Twins do have an off day tomorrow. They'll be off tomorrow and then in Anaheim Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So three and two. Well, the Twins will get an off day down in Southern California. Tap solely up the first baseline. Mauer will scoop it. Step on the bag. Side retired big inning for the A's. They score five times. Hit a couple of home runs. Butler is was first. That's a two run shot. And then following up Butler was Jake Smolinski. His was a solo shot. Seven nothing. A's lead the Twins after three. Athletics, Tommy Malone goes two and two thirds, gives up seven runs, five earned runs. So, we we'll have to sit on that one for a while. Yeah, and it's, uh, I mean, you, you want the A's to win. And you hope, but they hope the best for Tommy Malone, but it's just one of those days, and I think there's times that when you come back, you're a pitcher, a position player, you're playing against a team, you're, you're wanting to try so hard. I'm sure Tommy Malone wanted to do that. I mean, for 
the team especially because the twins trying to win the series. And for him personally also to be traded from this ball club. So the Jesse Chavez run support will increase dramatically after the first three innings. Two and one to Eddie Rosario, Mauer to follow, and then Torrey Hunter. Out of the mid of Fenway. Five strikeouts through the first three innings for Jesse Chavez. He has not walked anybody. He's allowed just one hit. You know, every pitcher wants to do it, but I think if you're pitching the third game of a series and you watch what Urban Santana did on Friday night when he got a five to nothing lead, he pitched like he was a one run game. And that's something every pitcher wants to do. You want to keep the runs off the board. And try to lower your ERA, all those things, and, and pick up a win and go deep in the game. Let's check in on our Ford Right Choice, Scott Casmir. What a pitching performance last night. He got a no decision, unfortunately, but he went eight and a third. Five hits, one run. He struck out five. He threw 112 pitches. And he went out there for the night, got the first out. And then the second hitter was. The single in the air on Lorian. He came out of the game. And he was great. Want to know to Joe Maurer. I think the A's are going to go with a four man rotation until the Giants series. Yeah. So starting Tuesday, they'll play straight through until the Monday off. So they need a fifth starter. Something they decided to do coming out of the break with off day tomorrow. Start Tuesday against the Blue Jays, then three against the Giants. So they need a fifth start of the weekend against San Francisco. So that would put Casimir to pitch Thursday. Right. And he would not pitch in the Giants here. Sonny Gray is scheduled to pitch Wednesday. One. That one's belted to right, and that's it well. Reddick toward the wall, at the wall, leaps, cannot quite get it. And Joe Maurer with a one out double. Same as last night turned out to be one that didn't make out out of the park and that could have been a big three run home run last night. Instead it was a double for Joe Maurer came close again this time a 2 0 pitch. Similar up on the wall in right center. It's Josh Riddick after the game I said did a great job of digging because the base runners didn't think and he said I thought I was going to catch it myself I said you can't jump 10. I thought it was almost out of the park for a home run, but great effort this time, but still over the glove. I mean, he seriously thought last night he was going to catch Maurer's ball, so maybe that tells you how unlikely it is for a ball to carry out because of the night game. Joe Maurer, he gets his 18th double of the year. One no to Torrey Hunter. Toward right center. Burns and Reddick are there. It's going to be Reddick. Maurer will tag. He'll try for third and he'll make it. In well, the ninth inning last night, Scott Casby got the first on a great play by Brett Lurie, but this is Dozier and spun past Ike Davis in an infield hit, and then the changeup. That Joe Maurer probably sat on the hole at bat and finally got it three and two, and they would tie the game. They would take the lead on a fastball of snow on a sack fly, but the A is able to come back tight and win it in the tenth. Here's Trevor Plouffe. Maurer at third. Jesse Chavez out of the windup. You mentioned Sano. Miguel Sano, the, mm -hmm. the rookie. He is out of the lineup today. He's going to be out of the lineup for just a little bit. He Hurt his ankle, but he hurt it yesterday during pregame infield practice. Stepped on a ball. When they take the ground balls, and he stepped on a baseball, turned his ankle. He played last night, but he came in today and he was on crutches. Struck out three times, first three at bats, and then got the sack fly, and then shut it down. And they expected him to be out maybe three to five days.
two and one to Trevor Plouffe, who struck out looking in the second inning. Plouffe now two for nine in the series. I'll always remember what happened Friday, though. Yep. Now, if he hit the same ball today that he hit Friday night, he could actually stand at home plate and watch it because it would be a no doubt. Not Friday night, though. That ball barely made it out. And unfortunately for Sonny Gray, gave up his first grand slam. It did make it out. Six ball in under the hands of Poof. You know what we're going to say? When Jim Palmer, when the AC, the Orioles, and Jim Palmer, Palmer's probably going to go up to Sonny Gray and says, You know, I never gave up a grand slam. Right. I, um, I would say there's a good chance that that's <laughs> how the conversation will Hall of Fame career. He never gave up one grand slam. Just pitched around everybody with base loaded. No, he was, he was that good. Three and two now to Plouffe with Aaron Hicks. The on deck hitter. Trying to strand Maurer at third. He's in the dirt. So first walk of the afternoon for Jesse Chavez. Now maybe he still hasn't figured it out because that was a 3-2 cutter, but also trying to make sure that he does not give in to Plouffe and make it a two-run home run. And so he went to the cutter, couldn't get him to chase, and ended up walking him. So here's Hicks. Runners at the corners. Hicks had a base hit in the second inning. Cues that one foul. It's going to roll right into the A's dugout. Hicks with two hits in the series. He's two for nine. Slightly open stance from the left side. And that would hit him. So now the bases are loaded for Shane Robinson. The Cut it up and in. Yep, just kept running. In. Got him in the right. Above the right elbow. But if the ball had been a two seamer coming back, it'd been a different story, but it kept running. Now batting, number 21, Shane Robinson. So for the twins, they have a chance to get back in the game. There are two outs. Robinson struck out swinging in the second inning. First pitch foul to the screen. Jesse Chavez jumps ahead. 66 pitches for Jesse, so fairly high pitch count. Swing and a miss. Robinson. Is now behind the count in two. Fidley had to move a lot. Of target was inside. The ball ran back towards the middle of the plate. And that's why a catcher has to be concerned with the movement. You call one pitch and it runs, and maybe unintentionally, but turned out to be a very good pitch anyway. Oh, two. Hit high in the air. Smolinski back. Warning track. He's got it. So the twins leave the bases loaded and we're going to the bottom of the fourth seven nothing A's lead.
TSNCA Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. It's all brought to you by T Mobile. Today's fan photo is Sherry Allgood from San Bruno. Simi deleted off bottom of the fourth. A's with two in the second and five in the third for their 7 0 lead. Simeon fouled out in his first at bat on the outside corner for strike, and it's a quick 0-2. Burns to follow, and then Canna here in fourth. O two pitch and hanger, and he lines it in the center field. Well, that's what you're supposed to do. Yep. A pitch up there. So good at bat for Simeon. Down 0 2, and this one just hung up there for him. And that's what you try to do again with two strikes. And you saw the curveball hit earlier by the Twins. Hicks and a ball to center field. And two strikes, you shorten your swing, try to make contact, give up maybe a, try to hit a home run. And in the case of Marcus Simeon, a solid base hit up the middle with two strikes. Burns is 0 for 2. Slaps it foul. Burns three for eleven in this series. Speed pitch. So Graham gets ahead of Burns 0 and 2, just like he did with Simeon. Simeon got the base hit. Seven hits now for the A's, just two for the Twins. We've seen the outfield play more shallow <laughs> for Burns yeah. than what the Twins are playing right now. Robinson very close to the line and shallow. 0 2 pitch, Burns swings and misses. Billy Burns very rarely strikes out. He usually makes contact. This time the pitch out of the strike zone. Hard fastball by Graham. And down and Billy Burns trying to slash and run. Billy Burns not strike out a huge amount. I mean that's the 42nd time. 283 at bats. Chops one slowly. Ploof bare hands throws and a very nice play by Trevor Ploof. You got to make that decision. Am I going to go glove or bare hand? And you got to go all in on either. Well, and you just have to look the ball into the bare hand, which he does perfectly. And and then flips it across. And that's got to be a good feeling to know you catch the ball in your hand and seem spread the fingers and oh. made an adjustment. Almost <laughs> lost awesome. it. That's a great shot because he ball almost slipped out of his fingers. Then he brought both index and middle finger back across the ball, and the rest of it was just hey, had a great play. And he did. And let's not forget that's in slow motion. Yes, it is. So you got to regroup him. It was almost out of his hand. Simeon now in scoring position, two outs for Zobrist. Zobrist with the RBI double in the third. Picking up his 32nd run batted in this year. Zobrist playing second base today. Breakdown for Zobrist. He's now made 28 starts at second base this year, 23 in left field. Four is the designated hitter and two in right. Which means that's why a lot of scouts are in the stands watching. Oh boy. The versatility. He has not made an error at second base this year. Oh. 
toward the gap. Hicks on the move and Hicks with a nice running catch. Out ran the baseball there. So runner stranded, we're on to the fifth. It's the A's seven and the Twins nothing. Nice day. We're looking Lake Merritt, downtown Oakland, in the background. It's got birthday party written all over it. So we had a bachelorette party on Friday night. The future Miss Brody Brazil was enjoying the ball game. Ran the block well. But that had birthday party written all over it. Kelsey's final swing before the ring, so it looks like another bachelorette party. I mean, hey, some bachelorette parties, they go to Vegas, you know, no. You come to the A's game, get a nice suite, enjoy yourself. Nothing wrong with that. Especially if your future husband can pay for it. That's true. Right? Brody's working today, so he'll be on. <laughs> Simeon scoops and Fryer is retired. So one away here in the fifth, and there is Amanda Blackwell who is marrying Brody Brazil, our A's pregame show host, who does a terrific job. What's the date for that? I don't know. I don't know. I would say Brody should probably as nervous as he is. I was gonna say, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Amanda is going to need to just tell Brody just it's a 162 game <laughs> schedule and you're going to win 60 and you're going to lose 60. Oh. And when you're driving home after the game, just put some music on so you don't worry about the outcome of the game. And the other 42, you can another 42, you hope that's going to decide yeah, what right. kind of year it is. <laughs> one and one to Danny Santana. Speaking of marriages, I heard today that Eric Housen is getting married on the 31st of this month. So, congratulations. We talked about his engagement. Of course, the Warriors, for world the champions, Warriors, yeah. and Eric Housen, formerly with the Athletics. And now he does everything for the Warriors travel arrangements, clubhouse, he pushing everything. Have. So, he finally gets some time to get married. So, congratulations to Eric. He's like Boose and oh, Mickey Morabito. All combined, yeah. Plus, plus, plus. Combined. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So he gets married right before another warrior season begins and uh, coming off a championship season. That's great. Two and two the count to Danny Santana. Yeah. 
He held up. Yes, he did. Swing and a miss. Off speed pitch and a good one from Jesse Chavez, who now has six strikeouts on the afternoon. I think one of the best things about a pitcher can make adjustments in game and Jesse has always talked about that and that's a great change up after the high fastball and a check swing came back lowered his sights and went for a change up out of the strike zone. Seven runs helps to be able to try to make those adjustments. Two away for Dozier. Takes the strike. Dozier struck out twice today, both times swinging, and both times pitches were well out of the strike zone. Dozier has struck out 82 times this year. Great start for him in the second half post All Star break as he hit a home run on a 2 2 high fastball from Sonny Gray. A little lob wedge, it's going to fall for a hit. Like one of those where you yep. had about 100 yards from the green, you maybe got to get it up in the air a little bit. And just Can you do that? A little half swing, <laughs> certainly not. <laughs> no, I can't. Certainly not. Look at this. Right. That's breaking ball out of the strike zone. He's probably happy he didn't get another cutter. Struck out twice on cutters out of the strike zone, but this one, check up. I'm sure, King Corey can make that shot. That's a good golfer. Now well, he's got the bad knees. So I don't know. Probably not golfing a lot right now. He's back to work, which is great for all of us. Oh, and one to Eddie Rosario. Oh, and one to Rosario. 0 oh, 2 to Rosario right on the outside corner. And Jesse Chavez struggled a little bit in the fourth inning, but it's much sharper here in the fifth. O 2 pitch, swing, and a miss. A high fastball, seven strikeouts through five innings. For Jesse Chavez. We're going to the bottom of the fifth. Seven nothing, the A's lead. Bat leading seven to nothing. Butler, Spolinski, and Lori. J.R. Graham and inning in the third so far. 22 pitches. Twins will need 
multiple innings out of J.R. Graham today with Tommy Malone being knocked out in the third. Butler with a two run homer in the third. Make that the second. Correction, make that the third. It was Fegley in the second. You get it right. Owen one to Butler. And there's a shot just foul. Well, this had to feel great for Billy Butler last night. Phil Hughes this afternoon. Fastball from Tommy Malone. Inside out swing carrying great to right center. And that was following the Ben Zobrist RBI double. One and two to Butler. So nine home runs and 44 RBIs now for Billy Butler. It's called. I'm going to have a great second half. Ace hope so because get the production that Billy Butler wants to bring to the ball club that the A's have seen several years with Kansas City. That's another great. Job. So he's got a base hit past Mao. 16th annual A's Root Beer Float Day is set for Wednesday, July the 22nd. A's players, coaches, local celebrities, and more will survey fans root beer floats for $3 each. Proceeds benefit JDRF, adding to the more than 400,000 the event has raised throughout the years. Sugar-free floats will be available. Special thanks to Dryer's Ice Cream, Whole Foods Market, and Zevia. The zero-calorie soda for product donations. Admission is free with a game ticket. So here's Smolinski who followed up Butler's home run with a home run of his own. Second of the year, first with the A's. Right, Smolinski got the base hit to tie the game last night, and also knowing that he was going to be in the lineup today facing Tommy Malone, who started the game. And there's a base hit to right field. Nice job of hitting by both Butler and Skolinski. Well, this is a back-to-back. -back. Third time this year that the A's have gone back-to-back. -back. Billy Butler and Skolinski going down and getting a change up on the front foot. And Tommy Malone can't believe it, but on Tommy. He has seen day like daytime baseball here and how the ball travels. And front foot, but the change up was elevated just enough that Smolenski could drive it as well as he hit the home run last year against the A's. Two on, nobody out for Lori. Lori has reached on an air and singled. He has scored twice. Strike on the outside corner. Red Sox and Angels will play tonight. It'll be Rodriguez for the Red Sox, a very fine young left hander. And Hector Santiago will pitch for the Red Hot Angels who have won nine out of their last 11. They'll be going for the sweep of the Red Sox. Actually I take that back. They play Monday as well. But the Angels have won the first two games of that series both times shutting out the Red Sox. Garrett Richards back to his normal pitching as he did last night. Anaheim. And the Red Sox will play again on Monday, and then the Angels will host these twins Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So that is the nationally televised game tonight. Weather permitting, do we ever say that in Anaheim in July? It's weird weather going on down south. Diving play by Dozier. He's going to get the out at first. Heck of a play. Did move the runners up. So a productive out, but. Brett Lurie would love to have seen that ball get yeah, in the right field. That's a great effort. That would have been the third in the right field, but Dozier, as he did last night, robs Brett Lurie. Great angle, diving, and the All Star comes up from his knees and bounces up to his feet and throws out Brett Lurie. And that's a great play. It does move a couple of runners in score position. See the all out play even with the A's leading 7 0. So 
RBI opportunity for Fegley. He's already had a big day. Two run homer in the second, RBI double in the third. First pitch and it hit him. Seems to be okay as he heads quickly to first base. So that's the second time an A's hitter has been hit by a pitch. Fastball up and in, got him on the right forearm. As big as his forearms are, it probably didn't hurt him at all as he flipped the mat back towards the dugout. Yeah, Allen. Fake, they had to be thinking, wait a minute, I've got a home run and a double, driven in three, and you're going to pitch to me? Well, they didn't, they hit it. But now it will be up to Josh Reddick, who's been dropped to eight from batting order, the left handed Tommy Malone start in the game. So he gets a chance with them loaded, trying to add on for the eight. See, 32 pitches for Graham. Tori Hunter talking to Eddie Gardado, teammates way back when before Tori went on to the Angels. Eddie Gardado now the bullpen coach. For the twins. Now right fielder, so Tony Hunter said, let's see what it looks like then. And, and he's a DH. At times the outfielders, right or left, will go to the respective bullpens. But uh, 17 seasons, Eddie Gardado, that's why he was called every day. He just found a way to get it done. Yes, he did. Every day he went out there, he found a way. It's a good man, though. So bases loaded, one out for Reddick. And Reddick blasts one, right center and deep. And that baby's gone. Grand slam for Reddick, 11 nothing A's lead. First career grand slam against his former team, the Red Sox. And he just hit one that was a no doubter. To give the A's an 11 to nothing lead. Josh Reddick, 12 and now 55. 12 home runs, 55 runs batted in. Phil Hughes gave up the slam to Stephen Vogt to show that last night. That was at Target Field. And it's the first slam the A's have hit here at the Coliseum this year. Mm. Fifth overall. Mauer may have a play, not quite. Slides into the side category. Now the first pitch, breaking ball. And Graham knew it. I don't think anybody in this park had any doubt, especially the hitter who swung the bat, and Josh Reddick crushes it. And you could enjoy that, Josh, because as hard as you hit it, you knew it was gone. That's up there, above, up in the seats in right center. Most grand slams in the American League. That's how you handle a runner in third unless it's two outs. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you get them all in. Clear the deck. Yep. This time, only one out. The other seven have come with two outs. And there's a line drive to left field. Robinson came in, then he had to stop and reach up and make the catch. Another well hit ball. Simeon is retired. So, four home runs hit by the Athletics today. And this is a team, Ray, that in the last six games, not including today, had scored just 13 runs. So the offense been quiet for a little bit. But coming to life today, we're just in the fifth inning, and the A's have scored 11 runs on 10 hits. And Billy Burns is 0 for 3. <laughs> that you don't figure you're going to say when you're scoring 11 runs. Reddick crushed the ball to right center. 
Santana throws quickly, throws wide, Burns is safe, he's going to go to second on an air. Now the question is, will they give him a hit? It's never a routine play with Burns and Santana. He threw on the run, Ray, and I don't know that he had to, but that's where the speed comes in. Six all the way, and but you're right. If, if he plays it at normal, playing back, he can go over the top. He has a very strong arm, but when you throw off balance and underneath as he tried to stop, go over the top, but no, he decides to throw from the side, and the ball just kept slicing, sailing away from Joe Maurer, who tried to reach up, make the play and tag. Could not. I think as fast as Burns is, he probably did not have to throw on the run. Exactly. I think he had enough time to just field it, straighten up, and throw it across. But and you see where he's playing now. He's on the outfield grass with Mark Canna, who runs well, but with Billy Burns, he was playing about four steps off the grass on the dirt. And the ball was hit hard. So really he didn't have to do everything that he tried to do. Kluf will grab this one. Side retired. Grand slam for Josh Reddick. So the A's putting on a power show today here at the Coliseum. Sixth inning coming up. 11 to nothing. The A's lead. Is celebrating 13 years. You can watch every out of market game live or on demand in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Real time highlights, live look ins, fit tracking widget, and more every night on every device. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Jesse Chavez got to be thinking, am I actually pitching this game? 11 to nothing. Do I really have all those runs? And Remarkably well considering the first two innings once again. 35 pitches in the first two. He may not go the seven or eight that he pitched against the Twins and the Yankees, but those guys don't think so as they loosen up. Flaherty and Scribner. They're practicing the Mike Gallego windmill. That's right. Two and one to Joe Maurer who has a double. It's one for two. Tory Hunter will hit next, and then Trevor Plouffe here in the sixth inning. Strike, fastball right there. Two and two, the count, 90 miles an hour. 86 pitches for Jesse Chavez.
Swing. And a miss. He struck him out. Eight strikeouts now for Shama. He's getting better as this game has progressed. And once again, you strike out Joe Maurer. Good hitter away and try to reach, try to make contact. Couldn't. Now, Jesse Chavez, a very good pitch on the 2 2, went right after the former most valuable player and batting champ. So that'll bring up Torrey Hunter. Everybody's been raving about the now 40 year old Torrey Hunter, and Tommy Malone was talking before the game about how much Torrey has meant to this Twins ball club. He was on the field, and we talked about his clubhouse presence. and. Tommy was first to point out how important he has been to this club. There was a great story about Matt Carpenter of the first place St. Louis Cardinals who Tory took under his wings down in Texas because he was at a high school where Tory's son was going to school. Tory made a donation to the school. He got a chance to meet Matt Carpenter, who was a 399th pick. The Cardinals got a thousand dollar signing bonus. And he, Tory Hunter, paid two years for Matt Carpenter to go to a special training school for athletes and paid every penny of it. And of course, Matt said there's no way he could afford it. So credit to Tory Hunter, not only helping himself, teammates, but other players as well. And Matt Carpenter will always remember what he did for him. And Matt Carpenter's turned into an all star player. Absolutely. And it's because of really what Tory Hunter did at a very young age. Aggressive as always swinging at a pitch in the dirt cut fastball that Jesse once again throwing three consecutive strikeouts. Gave up a hit to Dozier on the bloop base hit but then struck out the next three in the previous Santana fastball up high. So Ploof steps in. One hop to Simeon who grabs it. Throws wide. Canna grabs it. Steps on the bag side. Retired. So three up three down inning with a couple of strikeouts for Jesse Chavez. Bottom of the six coming up always today. They lead 11-0. One shot following an air. Billy Butler goes opposite field. And then following him is Jake Smolinski with a change up three and two. And then to get in the act, how about a grand slam by Josh Reddick on a breaking ball? Four home runs hit by the Athletics. to hit just seven in the early part of this month of July. But Jesse Chavez has taken advantage of the run support as he just struck out his ninth batter. So good effort all the way for the Athletics. Three hits for the Twins and the Athletics. Athletics 11 runs on 10 hits. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT mobilizing your world. So we got a new pitcher. It's Blaine Boyer. Taking over for J.R. Graham. 
So when it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Tune Up, your oil change tune up and smog expert. So Boyer comes in, he pitched in last night's game. It's just a third of an inning though, and only three 11 pitches. Graham goes two and a third. After Malone went two and two thirds. Going to the count to Ben Zobrist, who's one for three with an RBI double. Off the plate, Boyer waits. He's got it. He throws wide down the right field line. Zobrist will head to second. He'll stop there. And I'm going to make a guess here, Ray. It better be. You've got to be kidding me. That's got to be a base hit E1. You were going to say base hit E1. No, right? what I was going to say is I don't think that ball went into his glove. I think he fielded it off the outside of his glove. Not that that makes any sense. How about the difficulty of play? You're going to penalize. I mean, this should be at least a base hit. High chop. You're right, guy. And so they're looking at Sevy makes a good throw, but look what he had to do to try to make the play. No, I was wrong. I thought he fielded it, which is second he baseman once in a while. That's, that's, that's a horrible call. I'm sorry. I mean, you're, you're penalizing, taking a hit away from Ben Zobris when a pitcher has to make a perfect play. And he hurried everything. We talk about Billy Burns and his speed. Well, high chop off the plate. Pitcher knows he has to hurry. And he made a bad throw. Santana has this one. He throws in time. So Butler is retired. Zobra stays at second. Some changes defensively. Eduardo Nunez comes in the game at third base. So our first look at Nunez. Eduardo Escobar comes in the game at second base. And Trevor Plouffe moves from third to first. So basically, Maurer is out. Dozier's out. And as we said, Boyer, the new pitcher. So here's Malinsky, who is two for three. Homer single. He scored a couple of runs. That one is inside. Edward Mejica starts to throw. Up on the infield. Plouffe coming down the line at first, so Plouffe makes the catch. So two outs here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Lori will hit for the second time. Lori has reached on an air single and grounded out. He scored a couple of runs. J.R. Graham gives up five hits and four runs in his two and a third innings of work. Fastball first strike from Boyer. He's with two in the second, five in the third, four in the fifth. The four in the fifth was Reddick's grand slam. Hit well the right field. Rosario going back. Step in front of the warning track. Makes the catch. Side retired. Runner left. And we're through six in Oakland. It's the A's 11. With the Twins nothing.
remember this. A walk-off single for Steven Vogt. Of course, that was his first career walk-off. And then last night he got his first career regular season walk-off. Right. So he's got a regular season walk-off. He's got a postseason walk-off. Both line drives to left field. Same direction and, you know, just as important today for him to get the day off and the A's have this late, he gets a complete day off. Yeah. So they played last okay. night, it's a day off tomorrow off and we'll see what happens on Tuesday night as Edward Mejica takes over for Jesse Chavez. Another great performance by the A's starting pitcher, Jesse Chavez, who struggled at the beginning but figured it out, settled down. Is get a chance for the bullpen maybe to get some, some innings. You need to say something, don't you? No, I just need to say that when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change tune-up and smog experts. Sorry. I knew that. You're holding that. I will always wait for you, Mr. Fossey. <laughs> Canna has it. And Hicks is retired. So I wanted to run this by you. Interesting situation. Going on was Zach Granke. Right, Zach Granke today pitched against the Nationals. He pitched eight shutout innings. So Zach Granke now has 43 and two thirds innings. Shane 43 and two thirds consecutive scoreless innings. With about a one and three zero earned yeah. or Well, of course the record is Oral Hershiser, 59 consecutive scoreless mm -hmm. innings. So he's getting pretty close, right? He will start again on Friday. For the Dodgers against the Mets. So we don't know what's going to happen in that, but hypothetically, we'll just say, hey, what if he throws eight shutout innings? Well, his next start after that is scheduled to be the Thursday, no, the, the Wednesday against the A's at Dodger Stadium. Now, again, there's a start in between there where lots of different things could happen, but if he were to throw eight shutout innings in his next start, he would have a chance to break the record, and it could be against the Athletics. How about that? Now that's a. Like I said it's, it's a possibility. Simeon throws nice play with Shane Robinson two outs. So what you may want to do is you may want to just keep a close eye on Zach Greinke's right. start next Friday, but he has 43 and two thirds consecutive scoreless wow. innings. Eight shutout innings today. Late Don Drysdale had the original record. And was uh, who was the hit batter that umpire said he didn't try to get out of the way? Dick Deeds. Dick Deeds. Yeah. It was against the Giants. Now Barton. I can't remember the umpire's name, but pretty controversial. Yeah, and uh, he would not allow him to go to first base. So he didn't try to get out of the way. There was a controversial play in Hershiser's yeah. stretch as well. Happened at Candlestick Park. And kind of a rundown at second base where. Change the call and then helped Hershiser out. Even the fact that Grinke's a couple yeah. starts away from that number is pretty remarkable. Speaking of change the call, and I still think maybe, well, Ben Zobra should have been a base hit and he won, but last night in Atlanta, official score made a call. Nick Markakis in the first inning when John Lester pitching, he ruled it a base hit. Gets into the seventh inning, says, my mistake, E5, because Lester had a no hitter <laughs> into the seventh. Yeah, eight. and he said, you know, I always thought that I made the wrong call, and I just took so long to make the change. Happened to be in the seventh, and it had nothing to do with the no hitter, of course. No, no. <laughs> but you know, we say, and I've heard people say it's supposed to be a clean hit for the first hit, and obviously, if there's a question of whether it was booted or not, it was booted, and to make it six innings later, make the change, that's going a little bit far. But he made it. Lester didn't get the no hitter anyway. Do it right away. Yeah. Exactly. So two and two the count to Eric Fryer, who has struck out and grounded out, catching today. Outside corner strike three call. Nice inning for Edward Mejica. So we reached the seventh inning stretch, 11 0. The A's lead. And today, USAA would like to pay special recognition. To all of our service members at home and abroad.
11 to nothing. So Bob Melvin, it's tough for any big league manager to relax at all, but 11 to nothing in the seventh? Well, maybe a little bit. You know, just watching him a little bit uh, before we left or after where he finished last night, his uh, post game, he had a smile on his face with that great comeback for the A's and down by a run tied in the ninth with two outs and then one in the tenth. And so the skipper had a chance to smile a little bit. So 0 and 1 to Fegley. Casey Fiend comes in the game for the Twins, fourth pitcher of the afternoon. Wayne Boyer goes an inning. Fegley, a home run, a double, hit by a pitch. He's knocked in three, scored two. So. Perfect ball game offensively for Fegley. Swing and a miss. Pretty good fastball from Fiend. Yankees beat the Mariners today two to one. So the Yankees take two out of three in that series. Teixeira with his 23rd home run of the year. King Felix. CC Sabathia too, right? 52. Yeah, they both got no decision. They both pitched well. Towards center field where hits Hicks trots in and he's gone. So Fegley is retired for the first time today. So one away for Reddick, who had the grand slam in the fifth inning. And actually it's not going to be Reddick, it's going to be Sam Fold. So Reddick gets the grand slam and he'll take the rest of the afternoon on. So Fold will hit. And the first pitch a little bit outside. Astros beat the Rangers today 10 to nothing. So the Astros take two out of three from the Rangers. Keiko beat Gallardo. So Dallas Keiko now 12 and 4. Been so accustomed to watching the Astros, and if they win or lose, it determines where. So the A's are well now you have to look at the Angels because that's not the Astros. The A's looked like a chance to pick up a game but it was the Angels winning so they maintain their lead in the American League West. Sam Fold loses control of the bat to count one and two. And the Angels with the. What is now a one game lead after the Astros win today. Dallas Keiko had 13 strikeouts in seven innings today and lowered his ERA to 2.12. 14 ground ball outs, that's not a bad day for him. But I'm sure a lot of ground ball outs, but he does not normally strike out a lot of batters, but it's been a special day for him at Minute Maid Park. First place Royals beat the White Sox 4 to 1. Duffy over Sale. Chris Sale gave up 11 hits. Don't know how that happens. White Sox are swept in that series, right? Because they uh, lost yesterday. They were celebrating their 10th anniversary of their World Championship in 2005. Had all the returning players from that 05 season. Just a bit inside. So you can hear Hawks say, There's Paul. Paul hurt. <laughs> El Duque. Oh, that's right. They split the doubleheader. They yeah, I think they won Friday. the second it's, game of the right. doubleheader. Did Forget the White the, the doubleheader on Friday? Yeah. So they won one. Hit well the center. Hits going back. Still going back. Turns around in front of the wall and makes the catch. Two outs. Well, the former twin last year, the Athletics, then to the Twins and back to the A's. Sam Fold gets a chance to play against his former team of last year. Almost straight away center. Only one home run that was pulled down the right field line. Gets Montgomery. First pitch to Simeon is a strike. Jays shut out the Rays four to nothing. So the Blue Jays will head to Oakland after a shutout of the Rays. Estrada over Archer. 
interesting breakdown of the the Jays. They are 28 and 19 at home, 19 and 28 on the road. So they're tough to play there. You go in there and they're going to go bombs away on you. But not a very good road team. Blue Jays with the win right at the 500 mark to 47 and 47. So that's a three up, three down inning for Casey Fiend, and we're moving to the eighth inning with the A's leading 11 to nothing. One clock on the CBR. Starts with the Toronto Blue Jays. There's your matchup. Burley and Graveman on Tuesday. Dubrant and Gray on Wednesday. Hutchinson and Casimir on Thursday. Tuesday, Wednesday, night games. And then Thursday is a day game. You'll see them all right here on Comcast Sportsnet California. So off day tomorrow for the Athletics. A home off day, which doesn't happen very often. So that's it. Blue Jays fans scouting the A's early. <laughs> Seeing what the Athletics are all about. Probably impressed after today's day. Walk off win last night. Four home runs today. Oh. Eric O'Flaherty comes in to pitch the eighth inning. He'll face Santana. And then back to the top of the order. Sam Fold is now in right field. Base hit to right field. Santana goes the other way. So when it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Tune-Up. Your oil change tune-up and smog experts. Appearance number 21 for O'Flaherty. Trying to knock that ERA down. Yeah. As Ray has said many times, when you have a high ERA as a reliever, it can take you sometimes two months to get it back down. So one bad outing for a reliever can make the statistics a little bit ugly. A line drive and a base hit for Escobar, his first at bat. What you don't need to do is just come in and throw fastballs. I know Fernando Rodriguez pitched a game in which it was kind of a one sided game and threw it up in the fastballs and got hit a little bit. And O'Flaherty, this is a fastball. These hitters are going to be looking fastballs. Yeah, They're going to be up there Number figuring 20, 11 runs. 80. They're going to try to get ahead with the first pitch strike with a fastball and they're not going to be taking them. And I think these two hitters have shown that. Fegley having a conversation with O'Flaherty, maybe to talk about this just pitch a normal game. So two on, nobody out. Rosario steps in.
First pitch is at the letters first strike. So 0 1 1 to Rosario. Of course, an interesting time of year during the baseball season with the trade deadline 10 days away, whatever it is. So the rumors run hot, of course, but maybe the name that's been out there the longest is Cole Hamels. Yeah. Everybody wants Cole Hamels, right? I mean, From day one. A, yeah, he's a great pitcher and he's got. He's in the middle of a long contract, so if you got him, you'd have him for four years. It would cost you a lot of money. And Rosario waves at a pitch from O'Flaherty. Rosario will head back to the dugout. So that's 11 strikeouts for these pitchers today. So one out. So, I mean, scouts watching Cole Hamels very closely. We'd love to have the guy, but you wonder what happens if the guy doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. And Cole Hamels, we all know how good he is, but his last two starts, Ray, against the Giants, nine earned runs That's in right. three and a third innings. Today, five earned runs and eight hits in three innings, knocked out of the game. I mean, it's hard not to be pushed one way or the other with what you've seen from somebody recently, even though everybody knows how good he is. And I think that's that's the key. First of all, if he's healthy, no. you look at probably what he can do to a successful club versus a team that is going nowhere. And it, it's hard to pitch and play for a team that virtually is a losing team. Sure. So first, you get the out at first. So I understand what you're saying, but you have to look at what do we have to give up for him? And there's certain clubs can say forget about the salary mm -hmm. we can handle that yep. but it's prospects and what does he have three more years. Oh boy Maybe at four? least three and I think it may Maybe be four. four. Yeah. So they know cost certainly they know what they're getting. So if they give up prospects unlike teams that maybe have to think about a rental player. Sure he's not a rental. No he, he's a he's a <laughs> bona fide major league pitcher but but I, I think that to, to me the biggest thing would be health if he's healthy you figure put him in, in a lineup or not team. That's trying to win and go all the way probably changes his game. Oh, I don't he's, think there's any question. Yeah. And, and you know what? I mean, you may say it shouldn't, but it, it may be all yeah. the trade talk. Maybe it, it could get to a guy a little bit, but he's a very, very good pitcher. He's a World yeah. Series MVP. Exactly. And I think anybody's played on a winning team and a losing team, they know the difference. And they know that what difference does it make? If, if I go out and I pitch well, you know, it's really individual statistics, but I mean, you also think of even the A's, Scott Kazmir, Ben Zobrist, Clippert, guys whose sure. names have been mentioned. No think about having to play the game every day, wondering, am I going to be traded? And in the case of Cole Hamels, that's been from day one. And it's been, it's been over a year. Oh yeah. Because yeah. the Phillies have really struggled the last right. couple of years. Nice play by Lori. Throws to first, side retired. So the shutout continues as the Twins do not score. Bottom of the eighth coming up, 11 0 A's.
Game summary brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. All A's today. 0-5 and 3 for the Twins. 11-10 and 0 for the Athletics. Tommy Malone, who had been pitching great, knocked around big time today. And Jesse Chavez, nine strikeouts in six shutout innings. And the long ball, the story today for the Athletics. Four home runs, including Reddick's grand slam. Trevor May comes in. Big tall right-hander. And his first pitch to burn slapped five. Okay, starting the month of July, the A's had hit seven home runs through last night. They hit four today. So that's a, a very good sign for a ball club that trying to pick up offensively and definitely did it today in support of Jesse Chavez. And just trying to win a series of walk off last night and come out big today and score a lot of runs. One and two to Burns. Burns is 0 for 4. He reached on an air in the fifth inning. And there's a base hit to center field. Well, that ball was inside, and like Burns just pulled his hands in. And lined it to center. So he has his first hit today. And that's a great point. Pulling the hands in, get the sweet part of the bat on the ball instead of extending the arms and getting jammed. So you recognize maybe a strike. And he was not flying out of the batter's box. And this is not a time to run. <laughs> so try the first baseman. Clear for alerting everybody. I'm playing behind. So you're saying 11 nothing fits into the unwritten rule. Yeah, an unwritten okay. rule that we're not going to hold you on. So please, and if you're the A's, you're saying don't run and please don't. No. That's the last time the A's and Twins will see each other during the regular season. But some things are never forgotten. But the Astros and the Rangers had a little dust up that? last night. About that. Managers were yelling at each other. Announcers were probably yelling at each other. <laughs> Ashby, Tom Grieve going at it. Busby, Bill Brown. Yeah, Billy Brownie. Home games only, Brownie. <laughs> I guess it was Odor was taking a long yeah. time to get in the batter's box. And Corcoran, who said, let's go get in there. But you know, as we've talked about, and especially with the so-called pace of game rule that you can't step out, I mean, get the box. What are you waiting? Hank Conger, I'm sorry, yeah. it was Hank Conger yeah. from the Astros who told O'Dor, let's go, which yeah. I, that makes me like Hank Conger Absolutely. a little bit more. Absolutely. So two and two the count. Well, do you think Hank Conger, with the Red Sox coming to town, may say something to Hanley Ramirez? Hey, Hanley, let's just keep <laughs> yeah. it moving a little bit because yeah. that walking around the dirt. Yeah. Two, two to Canna, and he rips one foul right over top the A's bullpen. I would just like to know if these certain players who are taking what amount of time to get in the batter's box when they're supposed to not have to be able to leave? Are they getting fined? Are they getting letters sent? or notified yeah. or something? Well, they're supposed to be fine after what May 1st, after the first month of kind of getting accustomed to the new rule. But I mean, there are some guys really abuse it, and you just wonder are they being fined and really don't care? Fastball running in on Canna, and he swings and misses 95 miles an hour. So one out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. So six strikeouts for Twins pitchers today. Eric Sogard is going to hit for Zobrist. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen, for the Athletics. Batting for Ben Zobrist. Number 28. Well, the pace of game experiment, I mean, the sim simple numbers tell you that it has worked. Yeah. The games are, on average, about eight, eight and a half minutes shorter than last year, which is a significant amount. Off of May, he scrambles after, throws to first to May. Just gets Sogar on a very hard hit ball. 
Well, I'm glad he threw him out because that might have been an error. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. So two outs, and here's Butler for his fifth at bat. Home run for Butler in the third, a two run shot. So he now has nine home runs and 44 RBIs for the season, and as Ray said, Maybe the start of a big second half, and that would be huge for the A's. First pitch from Trevor May in for a strike. Trevor May. Make his major league debut here against the A's. He did last year. Not his debut. It was an early, mm -hmm. very early start in his career. I don't think it lasted very long. If I remember correctly. These are things that you have a much better memory of. Than I do. It's impressive. <laughs> You know, the, the, the amazing thing now when you only see a team home and away, and that has changed last, well, started last couple of years. And, you know, somebody in the West, and you have four other teams in the West, you see them so often, 19 times, both home and away for the season. But, you know, you can put up, put everything away for the Twins after no today. And, uh, Throw the media guy away. <laughs> There's always the possibility of postseason play, and that's. Something you always want to think about as you go down the stretch makes life a lot easier for everybody. And then when you play on a team that's lost 100 games, you can't wait for the season to end. But uh, conversely, you win, you can't wait to get to the park. And A's have experienced the success the last three years at least, finishing off the season very well. Be a good way to start the traditional second half post All Star break, winning two or three against a very good team, the Minnesota Twins, especially after being shut out the opening game on Friday night, five to nothing, with your best starter on the mound. Another foul ball by Billy Butler. Sonny Gray will pitching in on Wednesday, Casimir Thursday. Neither of those two guys will pitch in the series against the Giants in San Francisco next weekend. That would mean Sonny Gray will get game one of the Dodgers series on Tuesday. One and two to Butler. Fryer bounced way out in front of home plate. August 9th last year, Trevor May, two innings. Three was it his major league debut? Yep. Three hits, four runs, four runs. Walked a bunch of guys. Didn't he? Seven. There you go. What a, what a memory. Right. To Butler, and it's a little low. It was a pretty close pitch, and Butler did kind of a half swing. Can you take that much time to appeal? <laughs> it's a number by a long time. Let's see. Get it quickly, maybe get a reaction. And started to head out in front. He does bring it back quickly, though, Butler. Foul ball. And the fan made the play. About three rows behind the twin dugout. All right. There's 
just enough empty seats around that gentleman that he had a little room to maneuver and make the play. Hit Butler, and we don't know where, but you could hear it. Well, the elbow guard. Fortunately, he had the elbow guard. I think that's where it hit him, cut because you could hear the sound. If he had taken this off the body, a bone, I don't know if he'd be walking that way to first base, but just, well, you're going to see it. You can't hear it in the slow motion. You could see it and maybe hear it in real time. Now, listen to this. You will not be in the game. If that was directly, unless your name is Brett Laurie, right. maybe take a Aventura fastball off your forearm and walk to first base. But fortunate, elbow guard is there for a reason. Deep to left, and that baby's gone. Another home run for Jake Smolinski. We may have our postseason or our postgame interview. Look at that. <laughs> Two over game for Smolenski. So Butler comes in, Burns comes in, and it's a three run shot. Well, the first pitch after the hit batter, there's a fastball. And Jake Smolenski said, Thank you. I had my first major league here at the Coliseum. I'm going to hit two in the same game for the first time. What a day for Smolenski. What a 24 hour period of time. A walk off last night and two home runs today. Also, a base hit to right field. Great swing on that one. And definitely this one. A line drive toward Escobar. Lori's retired. And so are the A's in the bottom of the eighth. But Smolenski with a three run homer at the A's have hit five home runs today. And it's a full fledged blowout. 14 to nothing. Maker with the longest lasting vehicles in America, Toyota. Let's go places. And by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. So Jake Smolenski with a two homer game. A's have hit five home runs today, and it's 14 to nothing. Think about how many times the A's have hit three home runs in the game this year. Never hit had not hit four and definitely not hit five. And that changed everything. But now the A's. They trying to get greedy. How many shutouts for the A's this year so far? Twelve. Twelve. And when for thirteen. Jesse Chavez, six innings, and whenever he walked, his only batter, Trevor Plouffe, that was with the runner at third, did not want to give in and uh, ended up getting out of the inning after hitting a batter, but kept the shutout intact.
And we cannot also forget about in the event what you walk Plouffe. Josh Fed blocked the ball in the dirt now at third base. And that also kept the shutout intact. So that one's lying into the left field corner. So Ploof hustling the second. He's got a leadoff double. So Scribner takes the mound on his birthday. Happy 30th birthday to Evan Scribner. And Josh Fegley, as he did with Eric O'Flaherty after two base hits to lead off the eighth inning, he went out and talked to him, and then O'Flaherty got a strikeout, ground out, ground out. And again, you have a pitcher coming in in a 14 and nothing lead, and you just want to get through it. That's not it for a reliever. And Scribner now just trying to keep it the way it is and trying to get three outs and hit the clubhouse. He faces Aaron Hicks. Single hit by pitch at a ground out for Hicks. Hicks says a left handed hitter reminds me of Carl Crawford. Yeah. Stands in there like Crawford does. So he, 2 0. Oh. I think he's thinking about 142 million. <laughs> he's glad he signed it when he did. <laughs> That's right. Oh, isn't that right? And glad the Dodgers Red Sox happy they would take his contract or take him period at his contract. So two and one the count with Shane Robinson in the on deck circle. He's trying to finish off shutout number 13 on the year. Hitting heroes today. Foul territory. And Smolens Smolens cannot quite get it. So two and two the count. Final in the American League. Another foul ball to keep the count two and two. Remember, we told you about the rain down south. And the Padres have been in a rain delay in San Diego. The Padres and the Rockies for about an hour and maybe even a little longer than that. So. That is very strange. In the fifth inning with Colorado leading one another, huh. Colorado's thinking every place we go it rains, even on the road. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know it's a bad year weather-wise when you you have a rain delay in July in San Diego. Rockies have had a whole oh. bunch of rain delays, cancellations. I'm sure Chet Leitner keeping all the fans up to date. What's going on? The broadcaster for the pot race. Swing and a miss. Off speed pitch. And that is the 12th strikeout for Mark A's Grant. pitcher. Mark Grant doing some impersonations. I'm sure Mark Grant is play. entertaining the crowd, the masses. Good curveball. And again, that's a great pitch now because right. if Hicks had hit the ball to the right side, Plouffe would have gone to third. The infield would have played back, conceding a run. Looking for outs, so great pitch and a good curveball from Scribner to get the first out. A little pop up foul by Shane Robinson, who is 0 for 3. Six hits for the Twins. Fourth pitcher, Chavez went six. Mahika, perfect seventh inning. O'Flaherty gave up a couple of hits, but kept the Twins off the board. And now Scribner trying to wrap it up. And going around is Robinson, one and two, broke down that swing. Good cut fastball, and 
get hit it probably thinking he's going to throw me a fastball and he did through a nice cutter and that's the reason for the swing by Robinson. Robinson steps back in. Fastball fouled straight back. I think the MVP of the day camp is the drummer right field in the hot sun. And he just is banging the drum it. all day. I mean, he hasn't stopped. He's our John Adams. Yeah. John Adams, the drummer in Cleveland. See, John only bangs the drum when the Indians are threatening. That's right. <laughs> You banged John Adam Big Drum. It was great. Scared me to death. It was great. One line foul. So the count remains one and two. Indians will be in town for their only trip to to Oakland in the Coliseum, and just wonder if John Adams will come with them. And have a drum off. Well, they'll be here right when the trade deadline is right. They'll be in the middle of that series. Last yeah, weekend in, uh, in July. Two and two to Robinson. And now a full count. Yeah, just looking at the out of town scoreboard, Cleveland is in Cincinnati. Yeah. Well, Jason Kipp is getting a speak to spend a week in Cincinnati. He was the Indians All Star representative. And so he went in Sunday night on the party bus and played the All Star game. And it's so is that a, a destination <laughs> spot? <laughs> Nothing against Cincinnati. Defends if you like the river. Yeah. We were there a couple of years ago, but only for a couple days. Right. Short stop, two game series. Hit well the center. Burns back and Burns loses it in the sun. It's going to allow Pluth to come in to score. And Robinson's going to end up at third. Burns was there, although it looked like he was struggling a little bit. And he lost it in the sun late, and the Twins are on the board. The late part is correct because he got under it, and as he went back right there, where is it, where is it? And then just reached for it, got a glove on it, could not put it in his glove right there. I don't think he even saw it at that point. That's why he turned away. If he turned the other way and then reached, he would have gotten it. But when he turned away from the ball, and Pluth figured it's going to be caught, so he's going halfway. And after the ball dropped, then but Marcus Simeon might have blocked his view, of the ball dropping in center field. That's too bad because under normal conditions, probably the ball is caught easily in the second out. Kind of the way it's gone for Evan Scribner yeah, this year true. as well. This is Eric Fryer who falls behind in the count. Oh, and two Fryer has struck out twice and grounded to short. Fegley with the nice block sliding to his right. The Mets and the Cardinals are in the 15th inning. It's St. Louis. Reach four foul to the screen by Fryer. As we mentioned earlier, the Angels will play tonight. The second place Astros won their game early. Did he go? Yes, he did. Fryer tried to hold up, couldn't do it, and 
He had a pretty good idea that Alfonso Marquez was going <laughs> to bring him up. Yeah, when in doubt, let's go. But he did go. Yep. That's that's a swing that uh, definitely was one that. So two outs. Here's Danny Santana. Just hope for the Twins. First pitch is a fastball low. Santana has. Grounded out, struck out, and single. Swing and a miss. Looks like a cutter down low. He's thrown quite a few of them this afternoon in this one inning. And good curveball he's thrown. One to Hicks and one to Fryer. Good block. I think he's blocked three now with the runner in third and less than two outs. Just in third in general. So one walk and 13 strikeouts for A's pitchers today. Scribner can finish it off. All this today, all the offense for the A's, they didn't have one walk. They didn't receive one walk. Of course, when Billy Butler was hit, by Trevor May, that was a pitch way out of the strike zone, but went as a hit that hit batter. And that's a swinging strikeout. Fegley to first, and that's the ball game. So the A's take the weekend series two games to one over the Minnesota Twins, and they do it in blowout fashion this afternoon, hitting five home runs, two by Jake Smolinski. So all A's this afternoon. Here at the Coliseum. Took two hours and 49 minutes. The attendance this afternoon 20,286. Final score the Athletics 14 and the Twins 1. You've been watching Ace Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet California. Part of the NBC Sports Group. Don't go away. Ace Post Game Live with Freddie Brazil and Shooty Babbitt is set to go. Yeah.